So it's finished here at Thoman Park, Munster 21, Harlequin 7. Keith Wood's been watching this game with me. Keith's overall thoughts, I suppose, good start for Munster? Yeah, good start. Um, I think a bit of a slow start at the, at the very beginning, a little bit uncertain, a little bit nervy, um, which can often happen. And as the game went on, well, they were in control for a huge amount of it, yet weren't getting the scores on the board. They were only six points up at half time. But as the game went on, they seemed to put a little bit more energy into it, take a little bit more control on the areas of the field and ultimately became a fairly comfortable win at the end. Harlequins probably at various stages though ultimately their own worst enemy like if you were to look back on the three yellow cards they got consecutive yellow cards as well pretty much one after the other meaning they pretty much played the bulk of the middle third of that match with 14 players Yeah it's a tough game um, as it is but when you've guys kind of been trooped off the field every few minutes it made it very hard for them their discipline was poor and they were daft penalties and they were kind of done for a reason but they were just not good enough uh, for, for a team I actually I was disappointed with Quinns in, in how they played um, uh, and I think they put too much reliance on their out half I, th I think a lot of their senior players didn't really come up to scratch today Yeah it was one of those games for months where they were kind of plodding along for, for various stages of it it wasn't really until they got over for that opening try of the game though where it, they really kind of started to feel comfortable yeah, it was a strange game. I, I, the refereeing was a little bit stop-start and it's hard to get into a cadence of the game. And um, most things stopped with a knock-on. Uh, the weather, as, as we can still see now, is pretty deplorable. Um, it rained uh, deluge three or four times during the game. The ball was very slippy. Um, some of the control and contact wasn't good enough. So things were penalties or... Uh, knock-ons or just hoof down the field there just wasn't a huge amount on show and that can kind of drift you out of a game even if you're, you're doing it yourself and I think for parts of the game there just wasn't a huge amount going on so they needed the comfort of finally getting a, a, a try which was became a penalty try and a, another yellow card um, and suddenly with that extra bit of a gap there was a bit more energy in the field um, uh, Quinns went down the field and uh, put themselves into a decent position and then scored a try and then Munster had to come back again. They were much better in the last 20 minutes of the game. Based on what you were saying throughout the match though, if there was an area of a bit of concern, elements in defence, players just shooting up a little bit but not actually executing that tackle? Yeah, I mean, you can you can shoot up and put somebody under pressure if you know the other guys are shooting up outside you because it means it covers off if somebody take, cuts a line or whatever. That didn't happen today. Uh, one, two players shot up on their own. That gives a space and gives a little bit of a chink in the armour for the opposition. That stopped happening in the second half. When it stopped happening, Munster looked an awful lot better defensively. Personally, I'd rather you were all shooting up on the line, maybe not as quick as the initial runner was in the first half, but a much faster line speed puts Munster in a better position. And one other thing that factors in, uh, that we are talking about, Gavin Coombs got his try on his European debut today. He's been outstanding this season. And also then we've had like Ben Healy coming off the bench. He looks strong. Craig Casey, as always this season, has looked strong. Josh Witcherly made his European debut off the bench. Is there a crop of young players coming through now, maybe for the first time in quite a few years, that can kind of backbone a Munster team? Well, they need to come come true. I mean, Munster really needs to have the bulk of its players coming from Munster. That's that's the nature of it. That's what you want your fans to support. They want to support homegrown talent. So there are some players coming through. Um, the query would have been should they have come through a couple of years ago, and it's been it's taken time for, the, for them to come through. Uh, I thought Coombs was quite enough in the first half, trying to come to terms with the lack of oxygen that's on a field at a higher level. Um, but when he did get his chance, he took it really, really well. Ben Healy got roughed up a couple of times when he came on. And what I loved was his riposte, which was a kick from 55 uh, metres straight over the post, which could have gone 75 if he needed it to. And it looked an awful lot better from that perspective. Would you consider Ben Healy for a start next week or is away in Claremont just a little bit too deep to throw him in? Um, I think away in Claremont is one of the most difficult things to do. Um, but I think Munster need to show courage of their convictions. And I also think they need to show a higher level of ambition. Um, if he does, he'll get roughened up. He's going to have to learn that sooner or later anyway. Um, I thought his reaction to it today was excellent.
Yes is the answer to that question. I <laughs> suddenly realised I hadn't answered the question. I would have start, I would have started him today and I would start him next week. Uh, Damien Del Ende as well. He was someone we were speaking about towards the tail end of our of our commentary. And it was funny, you were you were saying at the time that you know you, he just probably hasn't been involved close to play as much maybe as, as you might expect. It was something he actually said to us in the kind of pre-tournament interviews last week. He'd been... We were asking you know, Yuri, are you comfortable with where your game is at at the moment? And he was actually saying, even though he was wearing 12 on his back for pretty much every game so far this season, it's only been in the last few weeks that they've been playing him properly as a kind of traditional inside centre. That he spoke to Stephen Larkham and to, to Johan van Gran about that because for a lot of it, and we saw it when Rory Scannell came on, he was playing outside Rory Scannell a lot as an outside centre. Like, is that something you would have noticed that's probably just been a little bit too far removed from the action at times? Well, there's a couple of things on it. One, he's a World Cup winner, right? So he's a class act, and Munster have needed to bring a couple of world-class players in, which they did do this year. He also hasn't had a chance to play with most of the senior uh, Munster players. So what he's done for the last six months has pretty much been the um, can't call him the older brother because he's only 25 or 26 but he's the senior guy and you can see that that has to have an influence on some of the young guys that are coming through the system but he wants to come over here to win trophies he doesn't want to come over you know um, and this is the trophy he'd like to win he'd like to be you know a European champion that's something he'd like to hang his hat on and so today really is the first opportunity in the new season to get and play with all the big guys and he's been watching the guys off playing international rugby now they're all back he wants to get to know those guys really well and he wants to have a bigger influence I think he's been really calm in how he's gone about it he hasn't shunned but he hasn't shirked anything he looks very calm I think he, he puts a sense of calm on the players around him um, and I'm hoping to see uh, more attacking things from him in the future and then final one, just looking at next week, you mentioned you'd be inclined to, to put Ben Healy in there in a 10 shirt in Claremont. Any other changes you'd be, you'd be thinking of making? Uh, no, I think that would probably do it for me, actually. I thought we had a strong bench coming off uh, today, and I think that was very, very good. Um, I thought Conor Murray played pretty well today and then it was great to see Craig Casey get plenty of time when he came on as well and you have the change of pace option different, between those two as well different guys different styles great experience um, a chippy little fella that's going to do great things and I think he is going to do great things so I I think it looks like a better squad when it's done in that fashion but I, I think when you go down away to France you want to do very well you want to start well um, I'd go for Healy Keith, it's been a pleasure as always. Thanks for joining us today. Cheers, Neil. Loved it.